My name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the JRE. We have been solving JRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the JRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 227. Page number 227. And today is our lesson number 100. Lesson number 100, page 227. What you see on the blackboard is what we did yesterday, which is the problem I want you to quickly look at. Uh, problem number 2.4.1, which is at the bottom of page number 226. This is, the, this is the equation that they give you at the bottom of page 226, and we used the method of factorization as opposed to using the quadratic formula to find the solutions yesterday. And we're going to use the same method today to find the solution to the problem that you see on page number 227, example 2.4.2. What, what we do here is, we have an equation here, x squared has a coefficient of positive 2, this says the constant is negative 6, so we, what, we, what we have to do here is, is to look for two numbers, which when multiplied together, gives us positive 2 times negative 6, positive 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12. The same exact method will apply to the problem that we are about to do uh, in a second. I'm going to erase this part. The only thing that is going to change, the only thing that is going to change are these things. These are going to change obviously. This is going to change because we have a new equation. So let's see what we have. They tell you 5x squared five x squared plus three x minus two equals zero. Five x squared plus three x minus two equals zero. Now in this problem in this problem we are looking for we are looking for two numbers such that when we multiply them together we get positive five positive five times negative two times negative two this is a positive five positive five times negative two or negative ten and when we add and when we add these two numbers they have to give us positive three positive three can you think of two numbers uh, two such numbers why don't we first try out what we what is in front of us a positive five and a negative two we know positive five and a negative two uh, when you multiply them together, we get negative 10 because that's what we have in front of us here. Let's see what we get when we add them. Positive 5 and a negative 2, when we add them, oh, we do get negative, uh, we do get positive 3, which is what we're looking for. So here, we do not have to think of some brand new numbers like yesterday. These numbers that are there in front of us, they work. So these are the factors. Positive, positive 5 and a negative 2 are the factors. So let's, let's do it here. So we're going to break up this, we're going to break up this positive 3x. We're going to break up this positive 3x and we're going to express that as positive 5x minus 2x. Positive 5x minus 2x is going to give us the positive 3x, which is what we're going to express this as. 5x squared plus 5x minus 2x. You see, 5x plus 2x gives us the 3x that we're looking for. Minus 2 equals 0. This is your minus 2 right here. That's it. Now we start looking for common factors. So look at the first two terms here. If you look at this, this term and this term, do you find anything common? I see a 5 common. I see a common factor of 5. And I also see an x. This one has an x, so this one has x squared. Let's take out 5x common. If we take out 5x common, what are we left from this guy? We're left with just x. Because x times 5x is going to give us 5x squared. What are we left with this guy here? We took out everything. So are we left with 0? Of course not. 5x, 5x times 0 is not going to give us 5x. We are left with 1. We are left with 1. Because 1 times 5x is going to give us the 5x that we are looking for. 
Now let's move on to this one. This guy and this guy. Do you find any common in these two factors? Uh, in these two terms? I see a common factor of negative 2. If you take out negative 2, what are we left with the first guy here? We are left with x. Again, negative 2 times x is going to give us negative 2x. And what are we left for here? We took out negative 2. What, so what are we left here? Again, we are not left with 0. We are left with positive 1 equals 0. There we go. Now we ask ourselves, is there anything common between this part and this part? And the answer is yes. What is common in those two parts is this guy right here. x plus 1 and this guy has x plus 1. We can take out that common. x plus 1 comes out and here we are left with only 5. We are left with 5x in the first part and here we are left with negative 2x. And that equals to 0, we are told. So now we have two quantities which, when multiplied together, gives us a product of 0. Which means either the first quantity has to be 0, 0 times anything is 0, or perhaps the second quantity is equal to 0, or they are both equal to 0. So here we, what we conclude is that either x plus 1 is equal to 0, or 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. That's the only way the product of these two is going to equal 0. If x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x must be negative 1. Or if 5x minus 2 is equal to 0, then 5x must equal 2, which means x must equal 2 fifths. That's it. Those are, those are our roots. Those are called roots. That's, those are the answers. Negative 1 and a 2 over 5. Let's see what the book says. Yep, negative 1 and 2 over 5. Those are the answers. Now we have to verify it, just to make sure that we did not make a boo-boo. Of course we did not make a boo-boo because that's the answer they have in the book. But I'm going to verify them anyway, just, to, just so we can learn how to do the verification. It's very simple, very straightforward. Let's verify first root first. Let's verify the root of negative 1. So we, we go back here and put a negative 1 here. 5 times x squared, which is negative 1, we just found. x is negative 1. Plus 3x and negative 2. If this better add up, to, add up to 0. Let's see if it does. Negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Positive 1 times 5 is just 5. And two, positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 2. It does equal to 0. Oh, it does work. It does work. Of course it does. Now let's verify 2 over 5. Let's verify 2 over 5. 5x squared, so 5x squared, which is 2 over 5 squared, plus 3x, 3 times minus 2. Two over five, two over two over five, two over five squared is same as four over twenty-five. To save room, because I'm I'm learning our room here, I'm just going to write this as four over twenty-five. And we can simplify it. It becomes four over five, four over five, and this is six over five. Four over five plus six over five. It's 9 over 5. 9 over 5 minus 2 does not equal to 0. What the hell? I know 2 fifths is the right answer because that's what, uh, that's what we have here. What did we go, where did we go wrong? 2, two fifths. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. And this is 5. 5 is going to cancel out. We end up with 4 fifths. And here we have 3 times 2 fifths. 3 times 2 fifths is 3 times 2 over 5. 3 times 2 is 6, 6, oh, sorry, here we go, 3 times 2 is 6, plus a 4 is 10, so if you add them together, these two quantities, we end up with 10 over 5, and 10 over 5 of course is 2, 10 over 5 is 2, minus a 2, does equal to 0, it does work, it does equal to 0, it does, of course it has to equal to 0, because it's the right answer, I know it's the right answer, because the answer is in front of me in the book, that's it, it works. Now, another way we could have solved this thing, when we found the factors of 5x and ne negative 2x, when we found the factors of 5x and negative 2x, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have put a negative 2x here and a positive 5x over there. 
nothing would have changed nothing would have changed and I'm going to do that here on this side I'm going to raise all of this thing I'm going to raise all of this part and we're going to redo this problem I don't want you to think that the, that, that these factors of 5x and 2x were put in certain sequence for a reason because this 2 belongs with this 2 and this 5 belongs with this 5 that is not the reason let's, let's put them in other order 5x squared so we have 5x squared and we're going to write our 3x as negative 2x positive 5x you see negative 2x negative 2x and a positive 5x is going to give us positive 3x negative 2 equals to 0 and nothing is going to change. We're going to do the same exact process and we'll see that it's the same answer. What do we find common in this one and this one? I see x common. It says 5x squared and 2x. So if you take out the x from 5x squared, we have 5x left. Because 5x times x is 5x squared. Minus, we took out the x common, so we are left with 2. What do we find common in this, this term and this term? Do you find anything common in 5x and a negative 2? Do you find anything common at all? I don't. There is no common factor in there. So how do we write it? We write it as common factor of 1. We write it as common factor of 1. And this just stays the way it is. 5x minus 2. Because when there is nothing common, there is no common factor between the two quantities. For example, what are the, what's the common factors in 3 and 7? There is nothing common between 3 and 7. Well, one is common. One is, of course, a factor of any number. So we can uh, we can say that in theory, the common factor of three and seven is one, which is what's going on here. The common factor of five and two, five and two have nothing in common. So we take out one as a common factor. Now we look at this part, and we look at this part. Do you see anything common at all? I do. I see a common factor of this quantity, five x minus two. You see, it appears in both places. So we're going to take out that common. We're going to take out that common. 5x minus 2 comes out common, and from here we are left with just x, and from here we are left with 1 equals to 0. And the rest is the same, as you can see, the rest is the same. We end up with the same exact thing, x plus 1, x plus 1 times 5x minus 2 times 5x minus 2 equals 0. It's the same thing, just done in, just done in, in a different order. That's all. I did it this way just to convince you that I did not put 5x here for a reason. I put it quite inadvertently, quite unwittingly. Now if you do not know what unwittingly and inadvertently means, it doesn't hurt actually to improve your vocabulary. I'm going to tell you where we can learn the word unwittingly. Oh, it looks like we have not learned it. What the? We have not. I'm talking about the vocabulary lessons that I, that I put together on the YouTube. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, you can watch the videos and, and learn something. Let's see if we learn inadvertently. Unwittingly is not in my list. I thought we covered it, I thought we learned it, but we have not. Oh, there you go, inadvertent, day number 40. type in, if you're interested in learn, improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary, just type in vocabulary, D40, and my name, and it will pop right up. Inadvertent was the word that I just used, and the other word was unwittingly, which I have not covered yet, I, will, I promise you I will cover them in the future vocabulary videos soon. To do something unwittingly means to do something without, uh, without intention. I did it inadvertently, I did it without, uh, without, uh, without meaning to do it. That is to put 5x here, not because it belongs with 5x squared, that was not the reason. It happened quite inadvertently, I was just writing it, which is why I read it in a different order, to just to show you that it gives the same solution. I will see you tomorrow, on day number 101. Let's see what we will do tomorrow. Oh, where we will do the inequalities that you see on page number 228 the two inequalities that they give us. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.